Why don't fish have lungs? Well, in today's video, I'm going to tell you why. Stay tuned to learn more about the countercurrent mechanism in fish for AQA A-level biology. Welcome to Mr. How Biology, guys. Let's take a closer look at the countercurrent mechanism in fish. Let's go through the structure first of all. We have the gill cover here, which is also known as the operculum. Next, we have the mouth, aka the buccal cavity. You'll see fish opening and closing their mouths, and when they open their mouth, they'll reduce the pressure within the buccal cavity, drawing water in. Next, we have the gills. They're delicate. They're the gas exchange surface in the fish. And here we have an image showing the structure of the gills. Notice how they're nice and dark red, showing they've got a rich blood supply. And look at the surface area on them. They've got loads of filaments, which we'll cover a bit more later. But that's really going to dramatically increase the surface area, speeding up the exchange of gases. So here's another image showing those gills a bit closer up. And you can see the gill arches there and the gill filaments coming off them. Now, they're almost like the microvilli and villi in the small intestine. And again, there, they're adapted to speed up the exchange of substances. Now, this diagram here on the left will show when the mouth is open, water will move into the buccal chamber, aka the mouth, and it will flow over the gill arches, over the filaments, okay? And that oxygenated water is going to move over those filaments we can see. And we've got a little goldfish in the bottom right Water is going to go in through the mouth and out through the gills. In through the mouth, out through the gills. So here's a close-up look at the gill filaments. So we have the gill arch, which is the kind of hard structure at the end. And then branching off from the gill arch, we have filaments. Now, these filaments have a really rich blood supply, which is why they were dark red in the, in the image. And they have on top of them gill lamellae. Now, these lamellae are going to further increase the surface area. So the filaments are almost like the villi of the intestines, and the gill lamellae are almost like the microvilli. And with the gill lamellae, we can see that they've got their own blood supply too. And they're supplied by the efferent arteriole, and the afferent arteriole will take it away. So, some notes on the countercurrent mechanism here. The gills are made up of gill filaments that have lamellae at 90 degree angles. The filaments and lamellae significantly increase the surface area to volume ratio of the gills, speeding up the diffusion of oxygen. At the gills, water flows over the filaments and lamellae in opposite directions. That's why it's called countercurrent, because the blood flows in the opposite direction of the water. It flows counter to the current. The countercurrent mechanism maintains a concentration gradient over the full length of the gill filaments. So let's look at it in more detail. Well, if it was parallel flow, not countercurrent flow, this is what we'd have. We'd have water flowing in one direction and the blood flowing in the same direction. So let's do this mathematically. Well, let's imagine the water had 10 arbitrary units of oxygen. Well, to reach equilibrium with the blood, let's imagine the blood had a relative concentration of oxygen of zero, we'd have 10 in the water and that would go five and five. Okay. So we'd have five in the water, five in the blood, and that would continue. Well, at the next stage, we've got five in the water and five in the blood. So it's already at equilibrium. So no change again, already at equilibrium. And that continues. So in total, we've absorbed 50% of the oxygen from the water using parallel flow. Not bad, but not great either. Now, in the countercurrent mechanism, with the water flowing in one direction and the blood flowing in another, let's have a look what impact this will have on oxygen absorption. So, with our 10 arbitrary units of oxygen in the water there, we're going to have a very different situation because this water isn't meeting blood that's totally deoxygenated. It's actually going to meet blood that's got a little bit of oxygen already, and this will make more sense as we, as we go through. So the blood here will have six parts of six arbitrary units of oxygen and the water has 10. So that will equilibrate at eight. Then we've got eight in the water. Well, that's going to meet blood that's got four. So it'll equilibrate at six, six in the water, six in the blood. Then the water that's got six 
we'll make blood that's got a concentration of two arbitrary units. So six plus two is eight, equilibrate it, divided by two, that's going to be four in the water, four in the blood. And this process will just keep continuing as we go. And you can see that because the water isn't meeting totally deoxygenated blood and just 50-50 equilibrating, it's actually meeting blood that's already got a bit of oxygen in it. Then it's meeting more blood that's got slightly less oxygen then more blood that's got even less. We're really getting the maximum absorption of oxygen from that water. So in total, we've absorbed 80% of the oxygen from the water into the blood. So you can see that's a 30% increase compared to parallel flow. So let's have a look at the side-by-side -side comparison of these two processes. So you can see in the countercurrent mechanism, the water has gone from an oxygen level of 10 down to four, and the blood has increased from zero up to eight. In the parallel flow, the water has gone from 10 to five, and the blood has gone from zero to five, so the countercurrent mechanism wins. Now, let's summarize this now. So the mechanism maintains oxygen absorption across the entire lamellae. 80% of oxygen available in the water is absorbed by the blood. In contrast, parallel flow would only lead to around 50% of the oxygen being absorbed from the water. More oxygen will mean more aerobic respiration, which means more ATP, for key metabolic processes such as glycolysis, protein synthesis, cell division, active transport. Check out my video on active transport, by the way, for more information on that. But you can see that it would give the fish a real survival advantage to have the countercurrent mechanism. So this is a graph representing oxygen concentration and distance along the gill filament. So we can see that blood with the highest oxygen concentration at the beginning of the filament is meeting water with the highest concentration. But notice how the water's always got slightly more oxygen. So a bit of diffusion will occur there. And then at the end of the gill filament, blood with the least oxygen is meeting water with the least oxygen. So a little bit of diffusion of oxygen from the water into the blood is occurring there too. So this graph represents how oxygen is absorbed across the entire length of the gill filament with the countercurrent mechanism. So it's very powerful. So a couple of notes on that then. Blood enters the lamellae with a low oxygen concentration and leaves with a higher oxygen concentration. In the countercurrent mechanism, a large concentration gradient is maintained from the, the water into the blood across the entire lamellae of the gill filament. So that's everything for today, guys. If you like the video, please like the video and I will see you in the next one.